All right. Shall we convene the City Council Committee of the Whole meeting of July 11th, 2022 to order? If the clerk will call the roll, please. Brereton? Here. Flurry? Here. Frank? Here. Freeman? Here. McGee? Here. Mulhall? Here. Porter? Here. Prather? Here. Snow? Here. Stevens? Here. Ten present? Okay, thank you. Do we have any public comment this evening registered? No. No public comment, no public forum. Uh, reports of officers, boards, and special committees. Item one, building, planning, zoning, unfinished business. We have none. Item two, building, planning, zoning, new business. Uh, we have the, uh, we have Gina Delros, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Kip. Uh, Kip, would you give us a update, please, for building department? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for June, we had 133 permits for a value of construction, just over $4 million. Of those 133, we had 16 single-family homes, 124 residential, nine commercial. Uh, we're under review for Project Kelly, General Mills, Murphy's Gas Station still, Taco Bell, I've uh, spoken with Maria's, Gina's spoken with Maria's Pizza, they're doing a tenant build out. Americold, Dean Foods, which is <clears throat> now called Dairy Farmers of America, um, and Chapco Shaw, which is going in the old, the original Belvedere Bank. Uh, property maintenance wise, we have 34 closed cases out of 50 and 16 still open. And I'm open to questions. Any questions, Mr. Countryman? Okay. Hearing none, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Item B, Planning Zoning Department uh, update, Gina. Um, so in, in June, we had four cases that uh, the council heard last Monday. Um, I only have one case for tomorrow. It is the library. Uh, rezoning one of their properties. So I've been working with both the library and the park district on just some house cleaning as they've acquired properties. Uh, they have not rezoned it to their actual use. So the library is cleaning up their properties. The park district will be coming in later um, to clean up some of theirs. For instance, the park district on one parcel has six different zonings. So they're just, uh, so just been doing house cl uh, cleaning with them, which is a good thing. Um, historic Preservation went through the facade grant um, and they're starting to work on their awards program. Obviously the biggest um, thing that staff had for June was Heritage Days, which went um, successful regardless of the weather and it was uh, safe. So that was a huge deal. So thank you to Police, Fire and Public Works for all their effort on keeping that safe for everyone. And um, just working with um, the Heidner Group on a development that hopefully we'll have next week for you guys. Excuse me, any questions for Gina? Okay, thank you, Gina. And then item C, uh, the downtown facade improvement grant that you had provided in the packet, if you would. Yeah. So uh, we- Oh, wait a minute, uh, Alderman Brereton, I'm sorry. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, oh. Real quick, I'm gonna excuse, uh, recuse myself from this uh, due to possible conflict. All righty, thank you, sir. Okay, Gina. So, uh We had 27,256 to give out, so roughly 6,500 um, more than what we had, which is better than last year. Um, so out of those eight, what staff is recommending is that, um, well, first, if you look at the spreadsheet, there's staff recommendation of historic preservation. Historic preservation only focuses on historic preservation, um, where staff looks at the, the whole thing and the intent of the overlay district. So staff's recommendation is that 
209 South State Street, which is uh, caulking and, and painting and working on the uh, fascia to get the full reimbursement amount of 1725. 215 North State Street is requesting assistance to replace windows. Um, 3255 staff is requesting 2000. They also have gotten some grant money in the past. Um, 221 Logan Avenue is looking to, they spent a lot of money on a deck and their contractor um, did not complete it. So they are looking to, to finish it off, but assistance with finishing it. So they requested 5,000 staff is recommending 3,000. Again, not everyone could get the full amount. And since they're residential, not commercial staff recommended less. Um, 203 Logan Avenue is looking at replacing sidewalks and um, improving their accessibility ramp. They got a grant last year and never utilized it because the cost of construction went up significantly. They were going to do a uh, chairlift um, and that did not happen. So they are now coming back with revised plans for the sidewalks and accessibility ramp. So out of the 7,500, they're eligible for um, recommending 7,139. Uh, because some of this grant money is actually rolled over from theirs um, previously. So 227 Logan Avenue is uh, finishing up their porch and ramp repairs. Out of the 7,500, staff is recommending 5,000. Again, they got uh, grant money in the past. So that's one of the reasons why um, they didn't get the full amount. 137 South State Street is looking to repair the lintel, the iron columns that were exposed when they took the canopy down and paint they're requesting 2196 staff is re recommending 2000 um, 104 north state street is painting the northern wall where the new mural is going to go um, they're requesting 3400 staff is recommending 3000 and then 527 south state street is getting new windows um, they requested 3392 and staff was recommending the full reimbursement of 3392 so staff is recommending the city council motions to approve um, the grant dollars as stated for a total of 27,256. Okay, could I get a motion to that effect? Uh, motion by Alderman Stevens, second by Alderman Prather. Any discussions, any questions? We'll start with uh, Alderman Snow. So I sat in on this meeting and the commission themselves actually went through each property fairly extensive and um, if we go with their recommendation of the 18,617, the money would just roll over to next year's potential facade, correct? Correct. And, but again, historic preservation only looks at it from an historic preservation standpoint and the facade grant encompasses a much larger area and it states in the facade grant application that sidewalks are eligible projects, stuff like that. Um, so although historic preservation said no because it's sidewalks technically that is an allowable application so okay, anything further alderman alderman freeman thank you your honor I, I really don't have so much as a question gina just a couple observations um out of 115 eligible property owners we only had eight people Reply, I find that um, kind of mind-boggling, first of all. Um, and then I noticed out of the eight, we're granting all eight something. And um, a lot of them, with the exception of a couple, are like repeat um, that seem to um, apply at least as long as I've been here, um, like the Jensen's, Maria, uh, Reyes, um, uh, the the border realtors, which I think got denied last year, um, yada yada. So, like, I'm just kind of, I guess, confused as to 115 eligible property owners. We just have the same, basically, five or six, with only a couple newbies. Like, <laughs> we sent them out to everyone eligible. I, the properties in the list is for sale and I knew one of the parties interested in buying it. So I even sent it to them like, hey, I know you're interested in buying it. In case you end up buying it before that, you know, this deadline, here's the application, you know, trying to, you know, reach out. 
Um, you are eligible every three years for the grant. So, uh, you know, flower, the flower bin, that was three years ago. Um, Reyes was three years ago, so they are eligible again. Uh, you know, one year we had seven applications, then we had four, then we had like 22, now we have eight. So it, it does fluctuate. But yes, we sent it to everyone. Obviously, there are more properties down there that could definitely take advantage of it. Why they don't, I, they don't call me to say, hey, I have questions. There were, no, let me correct that. There were two. I got one phone call that said, hey, I won't be able to get it to you till like a week after the deadline. I said, I, I can't. And another one that was trying to make it, um, they got a grant last year, didn't do the project. They were hoping to get it done today and for this year, and they, they couldn't get their paperwork in time, and I can't extend it's not fair to everyone that met the deadline uh so that was possibly two one being a repeat um but yeah unless they call me and say i don't understand this or i have questions or i mean when people call i tell them if you can only get one quote and that's what's delaying it just give me the one quote to to get it in in time stuff like that but you're right it's it seems to be the same ones and i i don't know why no one calls to ask questions or give me input to to figure out what the problem is Thank you. Older woman, Frank. Uh, Gina, uh, 203 Logan Avenue, you said they didn't use their grant. Can you just explain that over again? So last year they got a grant. They were going to put up a wheelchair lift, kind of like what's at the Funderburg House and the museum and the community building where, you know, it just kind of lifts that step level. Um, the cost of that, the delay in getting it, and by the time, you know, just like COVID, equipment took forever to get. And by the time equipment was stocked, the prices were like triple. So they didn't complete that project. So although they got grant money awarded, they never utilized it. Um, there was about $13,000 from grant money last year that rolled over to this year. That's why there's so much available. So, so they didn't receive that money? Correct. Okay, thank you. Which is why I recommended they get such a large amount because, like I said, 13000 of this is rollover from unclaimed money last year. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Gina? Alderman Stevens. How often has the Apollo gotten money? I know they've gotten it, was it two years ago? Or? So... They got money for La Costa Bora last year and did not utilize it because, again, uh, the windows in the door were out of stock. By the time it came in stock, the prices were. Um, before that, they got historic preservation funds to fix a window, and they might have got grant funds the very first year, which would have been four years ago. But you are eligible every three years to get funding. When I was on the previous mayor, I thought they got two loads of money out of that one. When I was on there with Chamberlain and uh, our other budget. Was that for disperse, disbursement of TIF funds when the TIF expired? No, I think that was this year, right? Mm, I would have to pull up the 2019 files. If they got stuff in 2019, then they wouldn't have, like I said, Apollo might have got something in 2019. I'm not positive. I'd have to look. Okay. Last year was La Costa Bor, so those are two different properties. Same owner, but different properties. And you're eligible every three years to, to get a grant. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? All right, uh, we have a motion and second on the floor then uh, to approve the following grant awards uh, for the total amount of $27,256 for the eight addresses uh, that did apply uh, and they are listed. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed, thank you. And
For the record, Alderman Burden had left uh, for this discussion for potential conflict of interest to avoid that at 6.04 and returned at 6.16 p.m. Thank you, Alderman Berta. Uh Item three, public works to unfinished business. We have none. Item four, public works new business. Uh, public works update, Brent. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, last week, we had a couple storms come through town. Uh, lots of branches, uh, tree debris uh, came down along with those storms. And we continue to clean that, clean the debris up. Uh, we'll probably be doing that the balance of this week. So if you get any phone calls, you can direct them to the Public Works office. I think we've got a note up on the city's website as well. But we will be going throughout the entire city uh, doing branch pickup as a result of the storms. Uh, Logan Avenue work continues. Uh, they're on schedule. They should be starting to pour, hopefully, some curb and gutter on the north side this week. Um, so we'll be seeing some improvements there. Otherwise, if there's any questions, I can take. Okay. Any questions for Brent? Alderwoman Prather? Um, I just had a comment for uh, right there by the 7-Eleven. I've noticed, actually, when I've been going back and forth through there, there have been people that have just blown right through those stop signs. Is there a way we can put some flashing lights or something on those to make them a little bit more eye-catching? We can probably, well, we'd have to find some red ones for flashlight. I'll see if we can track some down or have the contractors see what they have to supply on those. Okay, okay. okay thank you. Any other questions for Brent? All right, and moving on, item B, Brent, uh, is yours? Thank you again, Your Honor. Uh, in your packets, the memo for our uh, change order number one for our 2018 wastewater treatment plan improvement project, as we touched on a little bit at last week's meeting. Attached to this memo is change order number one. The net increase to the contract for this change order is $77,473.62, which is 2% of the original contract amount of $3,740,000. The change order has been reviewed and recommended for approval by Baxter Woodman, our engineer on the project. Uh, the particulars, there's, there's, there's two cost increases. One is a uh, contract amount adjustment for the escalation of the purchase price of a new motor control center um, that's beyond the control of the contractor. Uh, the manufacturer actually was demanding more than what the final outcome was, but uh, through negotiation, we were able to reduce it down to the, to the number that you see in the change order of 7473.62. The second increase is for the additional sludge uh, that the, we're going to have the contractor remove on our behalf just because we don't have the facilities and the equipment existing to be able to do that on our own. Um, and that was at $70,000. $70, um, the third thing, it's not a cost adjustment, but there is a contact, contract time adjustment uh, to the end of the year. And that's basically just because of the delay, again, beyond the contractor's control of trying to get the valves and the different pieces of equipment in. Um, we were told February, we were told March, we were told June, now we're, I think we're into August, September, so um, hopefully we'll get it by the, the end of the year. So I would uh, recommend approval of change order number one for Williams Brothers Construction in the amount of $77,473.62 for the 2018 Wastewater Treatment Improvement Project. This work will be paid for from the Sewer Depreciation Fund as part of the IPA loan for this project. Okay, thank you, Brent. And being as part of the loan, there's also what would qualify for loan forgiveness. So. Okay. Could I get a motion to that effect, please? Motion by Alderman Stevens, second by Alderwoman Mohal. Thank you. Uh, any questions uh, regarding the change order number one for the 2018 Wastewater Treatment Plan Improvement Project that Brent had just talked about? Alderman Porter? Thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. Just one question. The $70,000, the additional cost associated with the additional sludge removal, was that not foreseeable uh, prior to this? Correct. So we had built in a quantity of sludge basically when we get to the bottom of the digester based on our previous experiences and our first sludge that we knew there was going to be some, some thicker sediments and stuff at the bottom that we simply could not handle with the equipment that we have available to us. Um, unfortunately, what we found when we were drawing down the second tank is, uh, and it kind of was a combination from the leftover from the first project, um, there's more of the thicker 
I'll call it the super thick stuff, um, as opposed to uh, the normal sludge uh, than was anticipated. So that's the reason for the increase. Okay. Any other questions for Brent uh, regarding the sludge? It's a nice term. Uh, Alderman Burden. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> I was just wondering if anybody recalled what the, the second lowest bid on this project was, because this one was originally 3740000 I wondered what the next closest bid was. I would have to look, but I can get that for you. Thanks. Okay. We'll get that. Uh, all in all, uh, they would still have to contend with... Uh, with that, I would imagine, Brent? Yes, it would be. But what we, for comparison purposes to see where, where it's at contract-wise, um, I can get that. And when I'm done with my section, while you're going, when you move into other, I'll go and pull the file out and get that information for you. Thanks. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Brent? All right. Hearing none, uh, we have a motion then on the floor. Uh, to approve the change order number one for Williams Brother Construction in the amount of $77,473.62 for the 2018 wastewater treatment plant improvement project. Uh, this work will be paid for uh, from the sewer depreciation fund as part of the IE, IEPA loan for this project. All those in favor, <coughs> please, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. And rent item D. Uh, next up would be the memo on your packet for the purchase of a mini sorry, excavator sir. and trailer for the water and sewer department. Um, our current budget includes $120,000 in our capital line item for the purchase of a new mini excavator and trailer. <coughs> We've received the following proposals for this equipment Altor, Altor for CAT, $75,500 with expected delivery of first quarter 2023. Bobcat of Rockford, 82,290.42, expected delivery six to eight months, which is basically first quarter of 2023. And Alta Equipment Company, uh, $84,606, delivery of 30 days. Uh, update on that, that piece of equipment is now in stock at the dealership, so it's a, it is available now. Um, and due to that availability of the Volvo Mini Excavator, my recommendation would be to approve the proposal from Alta Equipment Company for a new Volvo ECR50F excavator in the amount of $84,606. This equipment will be paid for from the Water Department Capital Fund, number 611750. Motion by Alderman Snow, second by Alderman Fleury. Any discussion regarding that motion? Alderman Frank. Thank you, Mayor. I just have one quick question. Is this going to replace something? Well, this would be in addition. This will basically um, be our primary piece of equipment used for doing excavations going forward. Um, it provides us more versatility, uh, more efficiency for us um, as opposed to the backhoe. It's got 360 radius. Uh, the pictures I included in the, uh, uh, along with the proposal, you'll notice on the one how it's right up next to the foundation of the building, park right next to it, being able to dig and excavate. So um, we have a smaller version of this machine, uh, mini excavator in the, with the street department. This one will be a one size bigger than that one, which will allow us to get the depth up to 12 feet, which is the majority of our work that we do for water and sewer. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Brent or Alderman Freeman? Thank you, Your Honor. So, Brent, we budgeted 120,000 for this, and with the Volvo and the trailer, we're coming in at just under 100,000. So, we're doing pretty good with that. That's correct. And then, as we, when we discuss the trailer, we're still on the lookout for a used trailer. Uh, we haven't been successful so far, but I've got another week theoretically before council action. So, we're still looking, um, but. Uh, used trailers they're just not out there and um, the trailer that we're, we're specking out or proposing to purchase it's a tilt bed with a with a front flat that stays flat and along with included in the price of the excavator includes two different buckets a, a grading bucket and a 
and a di digging bucket, as well as a uh, compactor and a, and a breaker, pavement breaker. So the idea being that we can put those attachments on the front part of the trailer and keep it with that machine at all times. So, Alderman Snow. So to touch base on the, the big white elephant, so we're paying the high bid on this one only because we want the equipment much sooner. And can we justify that? Just toss <coughs> it that, out there. That's correct. Yep, it's the additional cost to get it now versus next year. And um, in my opinion, it's worth that extra investment. However, if council decides they want to go with the 75.5, um, we can abide by that. But uh, the fact that the, the trailer, both the trailer and that excavator are in stock at the dealership, um, I find that attractive and beneficial to us. Alderman Porter. Thanks. Uh, Brent, you may have said this and may, maybe I missed it. These are brand new equipment? Yes, this is all, this is all new equipment. Any other questions regarding the motion on the floor regarding the excavator, the Volvo ECR 50F excavator? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, recommending the, of the approval of the proposal from Alta Equipment Company for a new Volvo ECR 50 excavator in the amount of Eighty-four thousand six hundred six dollars, uh, which will be paid from, paid for from the Water Depreciation Capital Fund, number sixty-one dash one seven five zero. Please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion passed. And uh, Brent. Next. Next up is the uh, trailers. Uh, again, we had uh, proposals from Alta Equipment fourteen thousand nine forty eight forty and Altar for Cat. 15474 Again, we're looking for a used trailer or a cheaper alternative, even if it's new. We have not found one cheaper than, than what we've got so far from Alta. Therefore, I would recommend approving an expenditure not to exceed $14,948.40 for the purchase of a trailer for the mini excavator. Uh, this equipment will be paid for from the Water Department Capital Fund 6117.50. And I'll provide update at the council meeting if we are able to find one at less cost. Okay. Could I get a motion to that effect, please? Motion by Alderman Fleury, second by Alderman Porter. Uh, any questions? Any discussion? Uh, Alderman Snow? Out of curiosity, the delivery of the second one, the higher one, but it says first quarter of 2024. That's correct. And, and frankly, on some of these, they, they were reluctant to even give us some pricing just because they couldn't, there was no guarantee on deliveries. I know when uh, Brent had first uh, approached me about this, um, my thought was um, regarding uh, the Volvo, the excavator, hopefully that we could go out and find a used uh, trailer if it has a few nicks and scratches on it. I don't think we Brent really cared about that, but... Uh, and hopefully we'd be able to make up some of the difference. I think that's still the goal. But um, whether or not we can find one, I guess, uh, we'll see. So any other questions? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of the expenditure not to exceed $14,948.40 for the purchase of a trailer for the mini excavator. If we can find a used trailer, that means our needs for less cost, then we will purchase that one. That meets our needs for le less cost, then we will purchase that one. This equipment will be paid for from the Water Depreciation Capital Fund, number 61-1750. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you, Brett. And now, now it's item D. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, memo in your packet, uh, chlorine storage tank replacement at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, and basically, if you go to the second page, it's a picture of the of our storage tanks that we have now. We have three large plastic uh, uh, fiberglass tanks that are um, about 7,500 gallons each. Um, due to some um, updates and changes that we've made down at the wastewater treatment plant, we no longer use near the amount of chlorine that we used to down there. Uh, therefore, out of those three tanks, we really only need one large tank to be replaced. Um, pricing on that tank, uh, Daltmeyer sales, 6330 
fertilizer dealer supply, $6,769, and Smith Ecological Systems, $9,650. Um, and again, attention to the delivery. Uh, the low, the co low cost was delivery of 30 weeks. Uh, the second low, low uh, proposal was three weeks. So based on that availability, I would recommend approval of the proposal from Fertilizer dealer supply in the amount of $6,769 for the purchase of a replacement chlorine tank at the wastewater treatment plant. This work will be paid for from line item 615-810-6000. And this tank will be a horizontal tank. It'll be 7,500 gallons, roughly. Same size as one of the three big ones. But those <coughs> big tanks were built when under construction and rehab of that building. And in order to get a big tank like that in there now, we'd have to take some walls or some roof out. So we're putting in a horizontal tank that will fit in the openings provided. And then we'll also have two um, um, totes as well, but the cost of each of those totes are within our um, purchasing guidelines to just buy over the counter. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, could I get a motion to that effect, please? Motion by Alderman Frank, second by Alderman Porter. Uh, hey Brent, what are we gonna do with the, uh, the old tanks? They will be drained and probably just cut ups to get them out of the building because, yeah, so okay. they will be going into the garbage. Okay. All right, any question? Alderman Freeman. Thank you again, Mayor. So Brent, being so these are 25 years old, was this something you foresaw and actually budgeted for this this year in this line item? Not specifically, no. Um, we had we've made two repairs so far this year, uh, uh, a repair on two of the three tanks, and the third one has got some damage that we already know of, so we can only fill it to a certain level. So um, now that we made those two temporary patches, yeah, we we don't want to wait till the next one starts to spring a leak. So. So we have money. We have money. We have a we have a amount for building repairs and everything. The wastewater treatment plant that covers any of these kinds of things that come up because they will. Have, we have unexpected expenses from time to time on a on a regular basis. So it's counted for in our in our budget. Okay, so we're not foregoing something else. No. Okay. Any other questions regarding the motion on second on the floor? All right, hearing none, uh, those in favor of the approval, those approving for the proposal from fertilizer dealer supply in the amount of $6,769 for the purchase of a replacement chlorine tank at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the, li the line item will be taken from the line item 61-5-810-6000. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Brent? Next up, uh, there was a memo on your desk for our 2022 MFT thermoplastic pavement striping bid tabulation. Um, we received four bids, uh, the low bid being from AC Pavement Striping, who was our same contractor last year, and $16,936. Um, I would recommend approval of the low bid from AC Pavement Striping in the amount of $16,936 for the 2022 MFT Thermoplastic Pavement Striping Project subject to IDOT approval. This work will be paid for from MFT funds. Okay, could I get a motion to that effect, please? Yeah, motion by Alderman Snow, second by Alderman Stevens. Uh, any questions for Brent? Uh, Alderman Snow? So Brent, obviously the high bid is almost uh, close to triple. What, any idea what their deal is or just the market and they thought they could get that? Uh, your guess would be as good as mine on that one. It is, it is apples and apple, apples to apples, correct? They bid off the yes. same sheet. Yep, Everything, everything's all bid on the same, same specs. Okay, any other questions? All right, hearing no other questions then. Those in favor of the, accepting the low bid from AC Pavement Striping in the amount of $16,936 for the 2022 MFT Thermoplastic Pavement Striping Project subject to IADOT approval and the work will be paid for from the MFT funds. This is the low bid on that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion passed. Thank you. And lastly, Brent. Next up, uh, you remember on your, in your desk tonight, uh, what you had in Motion that effect. Motion by Alderwoman Mohal. Second by Alderman Porter. Uh, any questions for Brent regarding that? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Moving on, uh, item five. Other, <coughs> we have under item A. Uh, Police uh, Intergovernmental Agreement for the Police Services uh, with Boone County Conservation District. Uh, you have a uh, memo, um, an agreement in your packet. Uh, I guess I would entertain a motion um, to approve that. Uh, interge intergover intergovernmental Agreement uh, for the Police Services with the <coughs> Uh, Boone County Conservation District. Motion by Alderman Snow, second by Alderman Mohal. And Mr. Uh, Mayor, by way of a little bit of history, this is actually an agreement we've had in place for, I don't want to say almost two decades now, uh, from time to time. This is exactly the same agreement we entered into with them last time with one change. Instead of them paying the actual police officer's rate of pay, the rate of pay is being based upon the average patrol officer's rate of pay, and that's because we don't know who we're going to sign there. In the past, there was one officer that was always assigned to them every year as the same officer. It was very easy to do. Now it could be any officer that the chief elects to uh, provide that service, and it could change during the year. Uh, but they will pay both the rate of pay as well as the overtime rate um, if there is overtime. Okay. Okay, thank you. Alderwoman Mohawk. Thank you. Is this um, renewed yearly? No, it is not. Um, this, this agreement would continue on. Uh, with the advent of having a new mayor in office, plus the fact that when I went back and tried to find a signed copy, I couldn't find one, um, we elected to bring it back forward again. Okay. Alderman Porter. So you say we have one officer that's assigned, so th basically there's not gonna be an officer patrolling it on each shift then, like different officers? No, no, no. Be, there'll be an officer that's assigned it. Do it's not reduce our shift strength at all, no. Yeah. Any other questions? Alderman Snow? So this usually just provides an officer, like the memo says, from May 1st through the 31st. And the reason why is they usually take the student, the school resource officer, and during the summer months assigned to the conservation district. And if you look under item F, uh, under uh, number two, city obligations, under item F, it says the city and district shall coordinate the exact coverage hours, whatever that, uh, whatever that's, however that's determined. Any other questions regarding that motion and second on the floor? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed, thank you. And item number B, uh, collective bargaining agreement with the Fraternal Order of Police, Belvedere Lodge number 245, patrol. Um, I'll ask the city attorney for some comments on that, if he would, please. Do you want to get a motion to approve first, or? Well, could I get a motion to, uh, to <coughs> approve? Motion by Alderman Stevens, second by Alderman Prather. Okay. Um, and Mr. Mayor, as it, the council might recognize uh, a couple of different times we've been before you in executive session to discuss this collective bargaining agreement. The one that's before you exa is exactly the same terms and conditions that the uh, council gave tacit approval for a lot of the terms of agreement to be entered into. 
by the bargaining team with the FOP. So it's no different than what you've seen in the past. Um, and quite frankly, uh, it is probably a fair deal um, given the current economic climate and where we have found ourselves with inflation. Um, as you know, the main changes are the across the boards, which are the same as you've seen before, which is the three, three and a half, three and three, as well as uh, the uh, stipend for um, master police officer. So I'll entertain any questions that you might have. Any questions regarding the agreement in front of you? I would echo uh, what the city attorney says. I think it uh, probably is an uh, inopportune time to be uh, negotiating a contract uh, with anybody um, based upon uh, the inflationary rate. And um, I think that uh, definitely uh, could have been, uh, hopefully, uh, well, it would have been better last year and it potentially could have been better or maybe worse next year. So it is what it is. but. Um, you know, you try and do the best you can. So that's what you have in front of you uh, here this evening is what we think is probably the best uh, the best we can do. But uh, I guess I should note the Fraternal Order Police have ratified this agreement. In fact, we have signed copies from them already. Any other questions? Okay. Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion uh, to accept the collective bargaining agreement with the Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge Number 245 uh, Patrol as presented. Uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. And. Uh, we don't have uh, an executive, we're not going to have an executive se session uh, this evening, so that concludes our business. Could I get a motion to adjourn, please? Motion by Alderwoman Prather, second by Alderman Stevens. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? For the record, uh, we adjourned at 6.43 p.m. Thank you, everybody. And in the nick of time. The second low bid for the um, treatment plant project question from earlier was three million eight hundred and thirty thousand dollars, so ninety thousand more than the low bid. Ninety thousand.